Hi everyone, uh, I'm back here now. This is a, uh, a video that's going to describe uh, the IBM 3151 serial terminal. Got to get a close up of the model number there. Neat stuff. Um, like I said in the introductory video, there aren't very many. Um, well, I'm sure there's an easy to use manual somewhere on how to get this thing going as a serial terminal with a with a computer system. Um, well, today I have it hooked up to my RS6000. Uh, server. Um, as you can see, I've got it set up here. I can log in. Uh, see if I get my password right. And I did. Yay! Okay. So, the reason I needed to show a video on this one is um, something I've never really confirmed, but I'm pretty sure there's a battery in the side of these things. It's supposed to maintain the um, settings. And as far as I can tell, if I power it off for even a couple of minutes, it does not retain that information. So, let's see here if I just turn it off. Uh, let's see if I wait a second and turn it back on. Will it retain its configuration? Does a power on beep? And, yeah, no, it, uh, it worked just fine. So it may actually not be a battery thing. It may be a uh, power supply thing. Um, so, let me take my camera off of its stand here real quick. <clears throat> so it's a very advanced stand. It's a pencil I shaved down so it can hold the uh, camera a little bit better. But let me get a couple of the uh, things out of the way here. Like I said, serial terminal. Um, I originally used a VT220 on, by the way, my R6000, and for whatever reason, it did not work that well. Um, so, way back when I got my R6000, I picked up a couple of serial terminals at the same time because the college, uh, boy college that is, was getting rid of most of their equipment. I said, well, hey, I'll take that off your hands, and they let me buy it for a very, very cheap price. And... Sorry, probably should have done that before the video, but uh, they came out to me with a very good price on all of this equipment. I think I picked up the server, the terminals, and a couple other servers for like less than a couple hundred dollars. So, um, what's interesting, of course, with this terminal is it uses the IBM Battleship clicky keyboard. It's a beautiful thing to type on, but some of the buttons are different. You know, you don't have the page up and the page down. You have a clear and an erase and a field. Um, there is no num lock. There's like a jump button. <laughs> um, but if important note is the... Um, so, uh, it's, it's the control characters on here, the control keys. So normally when you do a shifted key, you, you know, if I do shift 6, I get the caret symbol instead of the 6. If I do control on these keys, I get message, or alt cursor, or super, or more importantly, setup, system message, message, local, these control codes, or keys that control how the terminal works, as obviously you need to use the setup key in order to get into the little menu system inside of it to set it up, you know, control bit rates and things like that. I'm um, looking at the business end of it here. Uh, turn it around. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. We've got your standard serial connection. I believe that's a... Oh, let's see here. I bet you it's a standard yep, female connector. Going to a 25-pin male connector. Uh, connect that back on there before I forget how it goes. Um, that actually was one of the things I had to figure out was, is, you notice, none of those ports are labeled. On the right is the terminal, the computer connection, and in the middle is the printer connection. You had a serial printer. What's interesting is this slot is sort of like a PCM CIA slot, like on a laptop. But what it can do is you can load ROM cards in there for different terminal emulations. If you need to do a, a WISE terminal or data general or things like that. 
Uh, another neat thing here is, uh, let's see, well, the date is 1 slash 1990 on this model. So it's coming up on, what, 22 years uh, now that it's been on this planet. Uh, anyway, I'm going to pull the power for a second. I'm going to try to turn it on to sort of bleed off any remaining power in it. Turn it back off. I'm going to plug it in and see if it wants to go into its configuration mode. You'll see I have this label on there that says works 11 2 2008. I actually have two of these. One works, one does not. <coughs> and apparently I needed to actually indicate this to myself at one point. So let's turn it on and see what we get. The beep means that it's working. Aha! And there we go. So now we see the setup menu. So clearly, you know, if there was a battery inside this thing that's supposed to maintain settings, it's clearly not working. So, <clears throat> anyway, um, what's interesting here, of course, is they say the cursor keys move. Space changes. It alternates the option. Send goes you to the next menu, and setup is exit. The send key is actually where the right control key would normally, excuse me. Oh, interesting, yeah regular keyboard, alt, control, this keyboard, control, send. Hmm. Anyway, send key. Um, so again, in order to get this thing working on an RS6000, uh, you need to have it set kind of specific settings. Not your standard 3600 8N1, but, you know, something similar. And I got some notes here. So anyway, um, you have machine mode which, you know, I'll use the space key. I can alternate to try to get a good shot of that there. Well, it says IBM 3151. Oh, and if I hit space, it's IBM 3101. But I really just can't get a good shot of that. I'm also going to put the stand back on the uh, camera here so it will jiggle less. Thirty-one oh one, ADM three A, ADM five, IDS VP uh, HC. Oh boy, there's a lot of stuff. Well, we're gonna go back to IBM thirty-one fifty-one. Screen is normal or reverse, meaning it's right now it's black or yellow on black. Otherwise, it'd be black on yellow reverse. We'll leave it at normal. You can jump characters here, but we're gonna leave it at twenty-four by eighty. Scroll is jump. Uh, auto line feed has to be off. CRT saver I turn on, so it turns off the screen. Uh, turns off the screen after 15 minutes of uh, no activity. Uh, let's see here. What else did my notes say? Everything else is normal. Terminal ID I put IBM 3151. Some terminals and operating systems can query the serial terminal to find out what type of terminal it thinks it is. And if I put that in there, it seems to help the RS6000 know that there's a 3150, not one, not like a VT100 or something. So we're going to hit the send key. And that jumps us to the communications menu. Uh, let's see here. Operating mode. We're not in block mode. We're in echo mode. 9600 baud. 8-bit words. No parity. One-stop it. And the turnaround character, whatever that is, is CR, carriage return. Um, and really, that's it. The next one, you can change around what happens with the keyboard um, and the printer speeds, but since we don't need to change any of that, we're going to go, oh, eh, wrong key. I have to hit send. And here, we can hit save using the space key again. Links completed. Then, to exit... You have to, you know, how it says setup, and I would sit here and go, well, okay, I can figure it. How in the world do I change it so that I can exit? You have to hold down the control key here and hit this corner key, which is setup, and then that will take you out. And pardon me here, but let's see if I can't do that without dropping the camera. I'm just going to drop it.
control setup. And that takes us to a single block. But notice there's no like diagnostic information on the bottom. If you do control 9, you get that lower banner. It says echo and tells you if you're holding control down or shift. Um, and then you can do control 8. That changes the indicator top style. So it's blinking, solid underscore, blinking underscore, solid block. I just do the solid block. Uh-huh. And I believe, that's it, if we hit enter, hey, there's the login again. So, that concludes my little video demonstration of the IBM 3151 terminal. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and stay tuned for some more videos on the rest of the IBM R6000 system.